And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, a board game of English magic. Now, this is based on a book series, in fact, it tells you right here, based on a novel by Suzanne Clark. I've never read this book series. I plan to, actually, because I've heard that it's good, and so that may change my opinion of the game slightly, I guess. I'm going into this with no knowledge of the source. However, I did play the game with some people who have read the books or know the source, and I also, I also know there was a BBC miniseries on on this thing. So this is a game in which it's like a slightly alternate world where magic is around, but it's a little bit more debonair than like Harry Potter is more like feels modern. This is a more of a 18th century or that's what it feels like type vibe going on. And again, I'm kind of just guessing a lot of the stuff since I haven't read it. But in this game, you're trying to complete magical feats. You're trying to have the most magicianship in the world. I didn't know that was a word. Um, at the same time, there's a, some bad guy, the fairy, the man with thistle down hair, whatever he's called, and you're trying to be better than him. Let's take a look at it. The goal of this game is to defeat the fairy, or the th man with the thistle down hair, or whatever his name is. There's several names of his in the rules. And you're going to be turning over these Marseille cards as the game goes by, and in the top corner you can see a number, and that's how far his power is going to reach. You're going to be getting points by doing various things, you know, completing maybe this magic spell here will give you five. And so you are, at the end of your turn, trying to have more power than him at the end of 1811, 1813, 1815, or 1817, keeping track of these. If you don't, by the end of the 1817, then he wins and everyone loses. Players will be playing different magicians, so you can play Jonathan Strange or John, I, I don't know who all these different people are, but there are various magicians you can be, and they each have a special ability, and here they're going to have some discs in the middle, in the waters, and at the beginning of a player's turn, the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to pick one of these actions, moving a disc to that action, or they're going to still the waters, which means to bring these all back. So these different actions are going to allow you to break restrictions, uh, to move to any location on the board using the king's roads, which I think is means going through a mirror, using that person's special ability, or to take a book of magic. There are books of magic that are next to the board. These are worth one point for winning the game, but are going to allow you usually to convert resources or magic into other magic as time goes by. Players then have two moves on their turn. On the first turn, they can come on any location. After that, they move one, two. If you move to London, you can move to any location in London. And if you leave a location in London, you can go to any other location in London, or you can leave to an adjoining city, like from London to Cambridge. The reason you're trying to move is because you're trying to do social engagements. There are engagements that are different things you can go to. So let's say I go to this concert of Italian music in Marseille. So if I'm in Marseille, I can reveal this card and it's going to allow me to draw two introductions. Introductions are the other thing. So I might go to Lisbon to meet this gentleman here. So I go to Lisbon and I meet him, and what he is going to do is he's going to give me four points, but these aren't like the points that you win the game. Instead, this is prestige. There's a prestige thing on the board. I'll move it up here. Once I move my prestige up to certain points on this track, I will get a connection. A connection is on your board here where you can basically take special actions. One does give you points. Others, will. this one lets you on your turn. You can move two spaces instead of one as one of your two moves. You can discard two cards of the same uh, elements to place an element of any kind, things like that. And there's even other connections that you can get that are like a different version of that connection on your board that you can have. And so that's what you're going to be trying to get this prestige for. It also affects turn order each time the game goes. So the main way of confronting the fairy and getting your magicianship points, uh, which you can see listed here, is to use these resources. All the cards you have, these connection cards that you have, um, besides going around and letting you get connections and, well, the 
different people you run into, same thing. There are also a certain element here. There's different elements of magic, and you need to discard them to complete these. You'll have some in face up in front of you, and there will be some next to the board that players can grab too. Here's the problem though. This card that's flipped over at the beginning of each round, not only does that move the fairy a certain amount, it indicates how many cards you'll draw at the end of your turn, but it also shows you the elements you can use. So I can only use birds and wind this turn. This turn I can only use those two. Sometimes there's a turn where only one can be used. Now you can use more elements if you chose an action on your board here that allows you to use extra elements on your turn. So I want to use green, so I put this here even though the card itself doesn't show green on it. And if you complete one of these, and then you'll take it and you'll put it in your completed area, and you will get these points on it. That's pretty much it. Yes, cards are going to rotate. At the end of your turn, you'll draw some more of these social engagement cards, which if you use these properly, you can get more of these cards. And if you use both of them, you'll get the ingredients that you need to accomplish these. And again, the turn order here, when it gets 1811, 1813, 1815, and 1817, you want to be ahead of the fairy wherever they are on the track. And if you're not there, by the time 1817, if no one has won, then everyone has lost. The components for the game are okay. I don't mind the the look of the game, although this location here with the City of London, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming this is all thematic purposes to move around. It is kind of, you're trying to get Madrid to here, you need to go here, 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 and then you can jump around in London. It, it's, it's kind of a weird map. This track down here looks like it should be keeping track of your points, and in fact, why don't you keep track of your points in this game? You're just supposed to add them together when you confront the Thistle Down Man. I, I don't know why that's not there. I wish these cards mentioned what they were on them. This is one of the problems of the game is you never can remember what cards you're supposed to be drawing from what pile. Um, because, uh, yes, they show the same color in the front and back, but it just it's, it's an easy thing to mix up, we found, because they don't actually say what they do. And there's a lot of symbols in the game, and you have these tokens here, which you'll use as you complete, slowly complete your things and put down the tokens on your magic, but it, the whole, the, the best part of the game is, you know, the, the, the names of the different uh, things here. Manders, garments, rendered, quarrelsome, and boisterous. That's kind of silly and whimsical uh, from the, the newspaper, but other than that, I, I get the artwork, I get that it's into the, the game. The rules, though, seem to be written way more complex than they need to be. And there's uh, the Raven King, and then there's uh, the gentleman with a thistle down here and fairy, and they use that, those intermingled sometimes. And I guess if you read the book, you know who's who and what's what. But if you have never read these books, well, then I don't, a lot of this stuff is you're going to have to kind of read through and figure out what the rules are despite the theme. So overall, Osprey Games always does a good job, and this is strong thematic looking. I just don't know that it looks great as a game. I'm all for games that are themed around books. Last year, The Reckoners, which again was a game that got me interested in the theming of something. And so here I got interested in, I'm interested in reading these books because this game exists. But I, I want the game to be good whether or not you've read the books or not. And I feel that if you haven't read the books, this game will make no sense to you really and is not that good of a game. So at its core, this game is a game where you are collecting cards that you will spend to put resources on magic spells and get points for those magic spells that help you win the game. That's it. It's really simple. It's a tiny thing. Collect cards to do this. However, the way to get the cards is convoluted. You need to move around London and go to different spots and then use this card to get two of these cards and then use these cards to move up your reputation, which gives you extra special abilities. Or just don't do any of that and use the cards to get extra resources of magic that you can play. And it just feels like this long convoluted way to put a few markers on these cards. It also feels very random. There's so much randomness in this game. Randomness from the card that's flipped over that, oh, this is the, the card that was flipped over doesn't allow me to use the magic I was about to use this turn. So now I'm forced to take the action that lets me use that. We. Um, or this one here moves the thistle down man up, he, or whatever he's called, the fairy. He keeps moving up consistently at some random rate. And who likes a game, really, where there's a good chance that he'll win? It's like you can make the game harder or easier. 
it almost doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything that you're fighting this guy. At no point in this game do you feel like this guy's a bad guy or even a threat. He's like some background score tracker. Why didn't they just say the first person to 25 wins or something? Why is it this moving thing that's kind of random and you have to be ahead of it on certain turns? It it's, doesn't make the game interesting. It doesn't add anything to this game. I feel like this game might be very close to source material. In fact, I, I talk to the people who read the books and they're like, yeah, I get this, I understand this. But they also did not enjoy the game. The game just is a little confusing. It's, it's run around here, draw a card, go over here. It's like a pickup and delivery game, sort of, to get stuff that you can sort of do, but it has so many restrictions. You can't use these things this turn. Um, you have to still the waters to get your actions back so that you can break a rule again. It's, and then you can get these magic books that let you change this resource into that, which comes in handy once in a great while. Oh, I, I wanted to like this game. I did. Um, I, I, I like the idea of this this kind of magicians against you know your typical mage wizards from the Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. This idea here, which reminded me of a series of books I like called The Paper Magician, it feels like it's in that same kind of world type thing. I think that's awesome, but the gameplay itself needs to be interesting, and it really isn't. It feels like a really small game that they filled this big box with, and you're literally, and then just a lot of extra actions. That again, at the end of the day, I draw a card. Oh, I need to be in Rome to do this card. I'm nowhere near Rome. Well, I guess I know what I'm doing next turn, using the action to fly to Rome. But if I do that, then I can't do this. And it's, it just felt, well, it felt not fun. That's the end of the day. It, I don't care how faithful you are to the source material, game's got to be fun. And this one, I just didn't think meets that criteria. Oh, well. That's Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Hasn't put me off. I'll still probably read the book at some point because it sounds interesting. I think I'm done with the game, though. Dice Tower Judgment. Much ado about nothing. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.